This is Nikhil Sharma for Low Kick MMA. I'm delighted to be joined by Brian Batu. Hey, Brian, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, how was your training? I saw a clip of you dancing and having fun at the gym. Man, listen, um, uh, I love what I do. You know what I'm saying? I'm very happy I get to do it. Uh, and, you know, there's going to be some moments where you're dancing, you know what I'm saying, because you're having a good time. And then there's going to be some moments where... Uh, you know, you're just uh, on the verge of tears on the ground, you know what I'm saying, in a puddle of sweat. You know, it's in, you know, uh, that's what makes fighting great, you know what I'm saying? You get to experience a whole spectrum of emotions, you know what I'm saying? Any given day in training, you know what I'm saying, things could either be amazing or things could be terrible. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all a big pot. of the dance, so. so, you know, you can find me dancing anywhere. Yeah, and you'll be taking on Takashi Soto at UFC on ESPN 40 this August 6th. How are you feeling going into that matchup? Uh, man, I'm just excited, man. That, that's like the biggest thing I can say. I mean, um, Takashi is the the most experienced person I've ever fought. You know what I mean? Um, he's the first, like, uh, I would say international. Like, I've, I've fought people born in different places, but um the fact that he actually fought overseas for a little while you know i was a big fan of pride growing up so you know it's like i'm kind of jealous that he got to fight over there in asia i mean he was born over there but uh so you know this is just a, overall just like a really cool uh matchup i like the matchup um and more importantly besides all that i just feel fantastic right now you know like um i'm way better than the last time you Everyone saw me in the cage, so I'm really looking forward to going out there and showing off a little bit. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you about that. How's your um, camp and weight cut going? Because this is going to be your first UFC fight at welterweight. Am I correct? And I know you've even fought at two or five pounds in the amateur. So what prompted the change for you? It's, a, it's a, my first amateur fight at heavyweight. I weighed in at 240 in my first amateur fight. But uh, I tell you, I mean, going to welterweight, I thought I would go back up to 180, uh, go back up to 200, 205 before I went down to welterweight, to be completely honest. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of like the difference of being able to, like, do this full time as opposed to, you know, having to work a job and, you know, train when you can. Um, because now, like, I mean, I was trying to put on weight, but I was training so much and I was uh, – just grinding so much trying to get performance that I was just losing weight and you know people are people people were nervous they're like hey you gotta chill out you know you don't want to lose all your strength blah, blah, blah. I'm like dude I'm not trying I'm getting stronger getting faster I can't you know it's just like losing weight it's weird but um yeah so it's it's like it's crazy because I'm stronger than I've ever been but I'm also smaller than I've ever been so it's it's I can't wait that's a long answer to a short question I can't wait I'm very excited for this fight Oh, wow. So you say that you're fully dedicated to fighting now. Um, you used to work as a carpenter or are you still doing that as a part time? I uh, know. No, I stopped. Uh, I stopped doing that after the finale. And um, and you can even see from the finale to my fight with Trayshawn, the change in physique. You know what I mean? Um, and that just come that just came from that wasn't anything intentional. I did that just happened because I was training more, you know, um, it's like one of those crazy things where you always think you're working as hard as possible. You always think you're doing the most. And, you know, I was working as hard as I could under the circumstances I was working under. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I made the most out of what I was given. But now that um, now that I'm able to just train it, it's like a whole new world. You know what I mean? It, it just shows me it's like, OK, you thought you were working hard. Now we're working hard. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you thought you were good. Now we're going to get good. So, um, no, it, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it, 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 it interesting. Um, welterweight's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be wild to be a welterweight. You know what I'm saying? It's something that people have like kind of hinted at for a long time. I didn't think it would be possible, but, um, you know, uh, it, my abs are going to be popping. My biceps are going to look ginormous, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to yeah, look yeah. like a bronze statue out there when I fight Takashi Sato. So, you know, uh, yeah, this is another thing to be excited about, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you're on a seven-fight win streak. You, you're looking to get your eighth one. What's your official prediction for the fight? 
Uh, my initial prediction for the fight, uh, uh, I believe I'll finish him in uh, probably the second. You know what I'm saying? That's that's normally the safest. I mean, I feel like I said, I feel really good. Like I, you know, like honestly, like I feel like I could probably get the finish in the first and or the second. You know what I mean? Um, and that's nothing, nothing. That's not me trying to like be crappy towards Takashi. Like this isn't me like talking junk about him. That's just with where I'm at physically. That's just how I would feel going against everybody. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like a machine right now. So uh, when I go out there, you know, really expect you know the best version of Brian Battle that you've seen up to this point. I say that every time, but it's really, really true this time. You know, me and my coach. Coaches have been hard at work, you know what I'm saying? Plugging holes, fixing weakness, weaknesses, making the strength stronger, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and when you said finish, um, is there a specific kind of submission you're looking for, or could we also see a knockout? Man, either or. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, 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 I'm, I'm going to go out there and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, put a pace, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to put a lot of pressure. I'm going to let him pick his poison. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, if he wants to stay on the feet, then, you know, we got an answer for that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the one thing that you can see since I've really, except for one fight since I've been pro, uh, shot at me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because I have a fan, like, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Takashi had a shot on him just because. So if he wants the ground, we can ground. You know what I'm saying? I love the ground, you know? Uh, the ground, so uh, if he wants to go to the ground, we can go there. But uh, I just see that I'm very, you know, get the play out. Hey, Brian, there seem to be uh, some technical issues here. I've lost you. So, Brian, now that you're going to be out of world to it, who are you interested in? What are your goals ahead? I'm sorry, repeat that question one more time. Yes. So now that you're going to be at a world tour, who are you interested in after Sato? What's your goal ahead in the division? Um, man, but, you know, and this is one of those things where, you know, you have to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Like right now my focus is on Sato, but, you know, I can't lie, man. I got, I have a wish list, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, at the top of that list is Ian Gary. You know what I mean? I know he's, I know there's a lot of people that would love to have that fight and I'm one of them. You know what I mean? He's got a lot of hype and I want to steal all that hype. You know what I'm saying? Whatever clout he has, I want to take it. Um, and then also, I mean, really, it's tough for me, man, because, like, I look at the welterweight division. There's a bunch of killers in there. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's, like, the old kings at the top of the division, and there's a bunch of young kings coming up that are absolute monsters, and I want to fight all those guys. Like, if I could, in, in a perfect world, if I could uh, fight Sato, then fight Ian Gary, then fight Sean Brady, then fight Rachmanov, then fight Cosmot, that would be my ideal order. You know what I'm saying? That's how... And then Rachmanov and Sean Brady are kind of interchangeable, you know what I'm saying? Because they're about in the same in the rankings. So uh, that's not probably not going to happen, you know what I'm saying? But that in my ideal world, that's how I'd like to do it, you know what I'm saying? Take out all those those young studs that everyone thinks is so good, you know what I'm saying? Show everybody who who's really that dude, you know what I'm saying? Show everybody who's really the welterweight to watch, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you've been off to Ian Gary for a bit. I even saw that he replied to you saying that he's ducking you. So what exactly is going on there? Is he ducking you? I mean, you know, he's probably at the very least being protected. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say he's ducking me, you know. Uh, he could be, <laughs> you know. But um, all I'm saying is I asked for that matchup, uh, and I was willing to fight July 2nd. In fact, I would have preferred to fight July 2nd. That would have been a dream come true. And then I saw that he was fighting um, – 
this cat, he just fought. And I shoot, I shot my manager a message. I was like, come on, man, what's up? What do I got to do to get a fight? Because at that point, I didn't even have a fight booked. I was like, dang. Not only did I not get a fight, but the guy I wanted to fight is got taken up and he's fighting on the day that I wanted to fight on it. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to be too stressed out about it. Like, I don't actually know Ian. He's just mm-hmm. somebody who, uh, you know, I know he's, he believes what he's saying and I got to, you know, show him that what he's saying isn't true. You know what I'm saying? He thinks I'm the future. I'm the future. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't try to, uh, don't try to call yourself what I am. You know what I mean? And if he doesn't know it yet, then he'll know it after the fight one day. Yeah, and um, let's talk about the other person you just mentioned, Sean Brady. You also said that he's ducking you. Like literally 20, 30 minutes ago, I saw reports coming out that Sean Brady has been booked against Bilal Muhammad for the Abu Dhabi card in October, literally 20 minutes ago. So is he ducking you? What are your thoughts on the matchup? All the good stuff. No, he's not ducking me at all, dude. He just somebody in the top 10. And I get that. I was really, that was like a prayer. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, man, he wants to fight so bad. Maybe if I call him out, he'll take the fight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, for him, it's one of those things, you know, everyone, everyone's trying to be smart with the matchmaking, you know, uh, and I've never been ranked in the UFC, so I can't, I can't talk too much. You know what I'm saying? I can't criticize these guys. Um, but I know that's never really been my approach. You know what I'm saying? My approach is just like smash people. And it's like, if you're going to pay me to smash someone, like underneath me, then that's what, that's, what's going to happen. I'm gonna smash the dude underneath me. Uh, especially the people above me are ducking me. That's like, that's okay. You know what I mean? Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, but like I said, Sean Brady is, I had, I was like 95% sure that that fight wasn't going to happen. I don't even think he ever responded to me. Uh, but that's okay. Cause he's just another guy that I'm going to see down the line, you know? So, uh, just laying the groundwork. And then after I beat him, I'm going to, save all the receipts from those tweets where people were calling me crazy you know hell yeah that sounds like even a, a more exciting time i want to see him compete against muhammad and let's see where we go from there now hell let's yeah. talk oh, about that's him. gonna be a fight right there sean brady versus Bilal muhammad that's gonna be i gotta tune into that one right there that's for sure who do you think is gonna come out on top Dang, man, that's, I mean, that's tough, like, um, like, eye test wise, I test watching them, I, like, Sean Brady passes my eye test a little bit more in that one, but uh, Bilal's fought the best guys in that division, you know what I mean, so he has that experience, and he's still hungry, you know what I'm saying, it's different, there's a lot of guys where people talk about them having experience, um, but they're not as hungry anymore, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of counteracts that experience. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bilal still wants to win the title. You know what I'm saying? He's still going and gunning for the top. So that's going to be a really interesting fight because uh, Sean Brady wants his spot and he's not willing to give it up. So I, uh, I test wise, I, I'm picking Brady, but that'll be a banger of a fight. Yeah, that's good matchmaking right there. I wanted to talk about your last win against Treshawn Gore. In that fight, your right eye appeared to be shut, right? Now, my question is, during your post-fight interview with Michael Bisping, he asked you about the eye, and you said, who needs two eyes? So the question yeah. is, did you say that because it was Michael Bisping, or was it just a general joke you were making? No, no, I said that specifically because of Michael Bisping. I thought he was going to punk me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, he asked that, and I was like, looking at him, I was like, I was like, you, you realize the irony if you asked him this question. Man, like, I was like, bro, come on, man. Like, you want the title with, uh, out. Here we go. Yeah, you can go ahead. About Michael Bisping. Uh, whether the oh, joke- yeah, Michael Bisping. Yeah, man. No, it was, it was just, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Because, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, I'm all, my adrenaline's going. And, you know, I'm still, like, really edgy. You know what I'm saying? From the fight, because you got to be edgy when you're in the fight. And then, you know, he said that. And, you know, it's like to, as an MMA fan, someone who competes, you're, you're well versed in the fact that, you know, he only had one eye when he won the title. So I was like, yo, are you trying to make a joke out of me right now, dude? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was, yeah, I was like, bro, if you don't need two eyes, I don't need two eyes either, Michael. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, 
So yeah, if it was someone else, I definitely wouldn't have said that. Um, but yeah. you know, I, I, di I didn't think people, I thought that was just something that was like almost like a throwaway comment. I did not expect people to like latch on. It, I think that comment got more hits than my actual fight got, which is ironic, but whatever. You take what you can. Yeah, it's also crazy because after the battle you were just in where um, you won the fourth round, second round was kind of like that. And then third round, you came back and secured the win. And even after that, you were like shop with it on your feet, just banging all those one-liners. So that was pretty fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't stop. I told you, I'm a machine. Hey, you know what I mean? We keep going and going and going. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, fighters joined the UFC from many different ways. You came through the ultimate fighter by becoming the ultimate fighter. How much does that mean to you? Man, it's um, it's really something I appreciate more when I look back on it. You know, it, I mean, it's the past couple of years of my life have been like really fast. So, you know, I got married. December 5th, 2020, you know, went on the show in April, of April, 2021, you know, uh, fought, oh, figured out my wife was pregnant in February, then went out and did the show, was away for, you know, five, six weeks, however long it was, got back, you know, got ready for the finale while you're watching these episodes come out, then after that, Right after the finale, my baby was born. You know, our, our nep my nephew hangs out with us a lot. You know, he stays with us. So it was just like a lot of stuff has happened. So sometimes, you know, uh, it's easy to get lost in the sauce and kind of forget things. But um, when I get the memories that pop up on my phone of like what was happening this time last year and seeing all that stuff, that's when it starts to um, really, you know, I, I really appreciate that whole experience um and you know it's obviously i grew up watching the show so it was cool but i think the biggest thing is i'll probably be able to appreciate it more once i'm done fighting um mm. because right now the thing is it's like it's you know you can't get too hung up on accomplishments you know what i'm saying you got to keep on going so um you know i can only like enjoy that thing that happened in the past so much before I got to just, you know, just keep on going into the future. I enjoy the benefits of it a lot. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy the benefits of being the ultimate fighter every day, whether that's just how people treat me or the opportunities that are available to me. But um, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's really cool, but I know if that's all I did, then people would never care about me. You know what I'm saying? I'd just be another note in the history of the game. Yeah. Um, would you recommend that route that you took to up and coming fighters? Um, if, if you, uh, you are, if you got it up here, you know what I'm saying? If you got it up here, the people I would recommend it to the most aren't necessarily like the highly, which is ironic because they need more highly touted prospects on the show to kind of, help boost the ratings and whatever uh to to legitimize it but um for really hungry people like me when i was on there like i had no business winning the show you know what i'm saying like there's a reason why nobody thought i was gonna win because in theory on paper i had no business winning but i mean no one lives with me in my daily life you know what i'm saying no one was there seeing like everything i did and everything i sacrificed just to get on the show and like I told him, I was like, bro, you get on, let me on the show, then I'll take care of the rest. And that's just like the mental, I was desperate. You know what I'm saying? I was hungry. You know, I, I think those guys were as desperate or as hungry. You know what I'm saying? And I know people talked about it, but there's a difference between talking and living it. You know, uh, I lived that every day. So um, if you're someone who's really just like really hungry and, um, you know, you might not have the best circumstances going on in life currently, and best by best circumstances, I mean circumstances for training. Like you got a lot of stuff going on. You got to work a job. You got a family or whatever. Um, you know, tough is a great, great opportunity because, you know, if you win, then, you know, you're not like set financially, but you're in a much better place. You know what I'm saying? You're in a place where you can really start uh, focusing on training and really give your shout, give yourself a shot to compete with the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I imagine or I wonder how it comes into play when you're, negotiating your contract 
because they do tend to keep you at the same price for a longer deal, right? When you come through that show, do you get benefits in return for that? Uh, like, yes, but it's like, I'd have to look at my contract exactly to <laughs> tell you everything. That's <laughs> one of those. Oh, yeah. man, you know, because um, this contract isn't, that's like one of those other things was like, um, this contract is just a mean to the next contract. You know, I gotta, I gotta beat as many uh, big names as possible on this contract. So when I get the next one, I can get all the bells and whistles. I, this contract's definitely nicer than your normal entry level. Like it's much better than your normal entry level UFC fighter contract. Like if I had a normal entry level contract, I'd probably still have to work a regular job. Um, I shouldn't say probably, I would have to work a regular job. Um, but with that being said, um, it's definitely not something where I can fight once a year and be happy with that. You know what I'm saying? I still want to fight two to three times a year, ideally three, maybe four times a year. That would be nice. You know what I'm saying? Then I could really start, uh, you know, stacking up some paper, you know what I mean? And start getting a little bit more, um, not have to think about money. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I want to be as a fighter in a place where I can just think solely about fighting solely about training partners solely about who i'm going to take out next you know what i'm saying i don't want to have to think about how i'm going to pay bills in two months you know yeah you want to be all focused in and now it seems like you are for this fight so i'm so excited to see the best version of brian battle um, my- i wanted to say it looks like from an outside that you feel like you're not getting your due is that true do you feel like you're not getting the recognition you deserve there's a like i i it's just something that's funny to me because um, I've done everything I said I would do up to this point, you know? Um, when I went to first be on Tough, you know, people, they're like, oh, you've only been training this long, so is this like an experiment for you? I was like, no, I'm going to win the show. You know what I'm saying? I went on and I won the show, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, when I fought Trey, you know what I'm saying? I told everybody I was going to beat Trey. I still came in. I came in as the underdog for, like, every fight I've had up to this point. And I've told people, like, boldly, like, no hesitation, you know, what I was going to do. And if I didn't do it exactly, I at least got the win every time I said I was going to win, you know. Uh, and, like, there's some people who are on the train, you know what I'm saying? But uh, – I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just letting people know so that after I do everything I say I do, I have like little, uh, little receipts to post. You know what I'm saying? There's something, there's something motivating about people thinking you can't accomplish something, you know, uh, it's, it's motivating and it's something where, you know, uh, it can be inspiring to others. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the people just see how unlikely everyone thought, it would be for me to do something and then I go out there and do it, you know, maybe someone else could see that and be like, huh, if he can do that, then maybe I could do this thing that everyone calls me crazy for trying to do. So, uh, I love, I love it when people aren't giving me the credit I I deserve, you know what I mean? So, um, yes. So the answer is yes, but I mean, I also understand where everyone's coming from, you know, uh, yeah. because a lot of the stuff I do is kind of weird and wonky. And, you know, if you don't know exactly what you're looking at or you never sparred or done anything with me, then you wouldn't really appreciate all the stuff I'm doing in there. Yeah, man. And I have to say your fan base is passionate in supporting you. Um, there's another cool fight tomorrow night. Um, and you have fought both of those opponents. You know who I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. about. I know what you're talking about. Oh, man. You beat both of them. My sons. (laughs) 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 How do you see that playing out? You say that again? Um, How do you see the fight playing out? It's like you've been in there, you've beat both of them. So what are your thoughts on the matchup? Man, I tell you what, that's a that is you talk about good matchmaking. That is excellent matchmaking because you're gonna get a lot of questions answered about both guys, you know. Um, and it's it's one of those things where you know, if Trey's back hits the mat, you know, his chances of winning go down dramatically. And I'm not saying that because he is a bad ground game. I'm just saying that because that's not where he's the strongest. And and Cody Cody can grapple his ass off. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely 
uh, took me down and elbowed me in the face. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, the, the big thing is, is that Trey, his, his wrestling is a little undervalued, I'd say, Just, you know, which is, makes sense. You know what I'm saying? He's a knockout artist, but his hips are so daggum good. He's so explosive. So even when you get your hands locked around him, he's able to just kind of explode and turn into you. Um, you know, Cody's a better wrestler than me, but. Uh, um, here, Brian, has lost you there. Yes. So, Brian, who do you see winning that one? Honestly, it's, uh, I'm conflicted. I go back and forth, but I just off of my experiences, I have a hard time not seeing Trey Sean getting the knockout. Um, you know, I definitely think he's going to come back off of the fight with me and he's going to have a different approach to the game. He's not going to be as passive. And um, boxer wrestlers are kind of his best. Like, they, he matches up with boxer wrestlers better than, you know, someone like me who's going to be dancing around and moving around. You know, he's going to come forward, um, uh, you know, definitely has a definitive advantage on the feet. Like, that's nothing, once again, nothing against Cody. Cody's been out there working. I know he's in Colorado working with, like, Jacoby and um, a bunch of other really good guys. But, um, yeah, man, Trey, Trey's hands are a little bit different. I ain't going to mm. lie. You know what I'm saying? I'll still beat him any day of the week, but his hands are different. Um, so, and his wrestling is really good. His hips are really good. Um, it's going to be a simple plan, game plan for Trey. Uh, what I see him doing is walking forward, putting pressure on him, not necessarily opening up too much, but constantly threatening to throw bombs. And um, if he gets Cody up against the cage, you know, he's going to throw bombs. If he can force Cody to shoot, that'll be like the deciding factor in the fight. You know what I'm saying? He's going to definitely try to pressure Cody into taking a bad shot. And if Cody takes – a shot off the pressure and finishes it. That's that's Cody all day. You know what I'm saying? Cody's gonna Cody's gonna maul him. But um, if Trey defends that first takedown, then I think it's gonna be a long night for Cody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. First, Brian, I would like to thank you for taking the time out to do this interview with us. And before we wrap it, I would like to give you the floor to give a shout out to sponsors, teammates, anyone else you would like to. All right. Well, uh, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sticking through with me. Um, I would like to, uh, shout out one, uh, my gym, we just, uh, my coach just opened up a new gym called Carolina combat sports and fitness. Um, you know, we're, we're looking to take over the East coast, you know what I'm saying? Being the, the, the premier spot to train at in North Carolina. Um, and so, you know, big shout out to Carolina combat. Uh, my coach himself, Tom Ziegler, my head coach, um, you know, he's, we've been working, we've been grinding for a long time. There's not a whole lot of people who had the same vision that I did, but uh, Sensei Tom's always had the same dream, you know. Um, uh, as far as uh, sponsors go, shout out to Hayabusa, you know what I'm saying? They keep your boy and all the nice gear, keep, you know, all the, all the top notch, you know what I mean? Keeping me protected and whatever. Um, shout out to Blacklight Tattoos, you know, day one sponsor man who put the tally marks on me um uh shout out to who else man there's a lot of people iridium sports jason house jacob farraga um charlotte jiu-jitsu another spot i train at Marvel warrior um uh, velocity sports you know oh uh, man you know and uh well a special shout out to my buddy uh taylor starling who will be fighting for the uh the bare knuckle title at the end of August. So I'm looking forward to that. We're gonna, me and Terry. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.